Hello, welcome to the Monday, March 5th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier came across yet another desktop crypto miner that was installed by malware. Now, what's sort of interesting in this particular case is that the malware is fairly protective of the system. Now, this isn't really new where malware is sort of deleting competing malware, but in this case, the malware is trying to get a hold of as much CPU as it can by deleting competing crypto coin miners. Now, the way these crypto coin miners are identified is by the process name, so nothing really all too fancy, but sort of interesting. It's a pretty good and complete list of these processes. So this list actually has a nice defensive use in that you could use this list and then look for processes like this on your own system in order to find crypto coin miners. And of course, there is almost no online crime these days that doesn't touch uh, cryptocurrencies in some way. Also, recent memcache denial of service attacks apparently are asking for ransom to be paid in Monero. So this is only a subset of the attacks that people were talking about last week and not all of the attacks are asking for ransom. Now, how they're asking for ransom? Well, the payload of the packets they're flooding you with actually will include instructions. Now, Akamai, who's reporting about this, uh, did say that you probably are better off not paying. And the simple reason is that apparently all victims are receiving the same address to send the money to. Also, this address has been used in the past, indicating that this is an older group that is still sort of riding that wave of asking for ransom in response to denial of service attacks. The problem is uh, because well, it's just one address. They don't really know where the money is coming from. So uh, really not sure how they would be tracking who is actually paying them. Uh, you're probably better off not to pay them at all because the attack will probably not stop. And no, you cannot ask for your money back. And antivirus company Dr. Webb is reporting that they found a bank in Trojan pre-installed on 40 different Android smartphones. Now, these are cheap sort of no-name Android smartphones. And sadly, this isn't actually the first time that this happened. Back in July, they already found that a number of manufacturers included pretty much the same Trojan in their smartphones. These manufacturers were notified and now new models that were actually released after this original discovery are now again infected with this particular malware. Apparently what's happening here is that the software companies are approaching these manufacturers to install additional software on their phones. Now we are all kind of used to the crapware that you often have on new devices, not just phones, but also on desktops, laptops, and the like. In this case, however, these software companies are also requesting the inclusion of specific system libraries. So they are not just installing this app that the user could install themselves, but they're also installing these system libraries, which then essentially leads to a rooted phone. The Trojan being deployed here is in particular capable of also installing additional software after the user starts using the phone. Now, if you're worried about uh, being affected by this particular threat, the show notes link to the Dr. Web article that lists all the phones that uh, they have discovered. Of course, there may be more out there. Many of these phones appear to be mostly marketed in China, but of course, some of them may show up outside China as well. And then we got another sort of more traditional piece of Android malware, RedDrop. RedDrop is a fairly recent malicious component being added to various games and such in third-party app stores. And this malware, it is able to record audio and it is sort of routinely sending audio samples back to the maker of this malware. It also sends SMS messages 
switches to premium numbers and has the ability to install additional software. Also, like most Android malware, it's able to exfiltrate files, photos, and the like, interestingly, to a Dropbox account that's obviously controlled by the attacker. Not sure if that Dropbox account is actually still available, but the attacker could easily update their software to then point to a different drop site. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.